Well, my name is Clyde Brickwist, and I'm the men's coordinator here at the Gospel Rescue Mission. And I'd like to introduce a good friend of mine. Uh, this is Skyler, and um, just an awesome brother in Christ. And um, Skyler had already been uh, here probably a, a year or so before I came on staff. But um, just wanted to ask a little bit, what was, what was going on in your world uh, before you checked in, decided to check into the mission? Well, I was born and raised in a family that was just heavily involved in drugs, and, and finally I reached a point where I just, I just didn't want to live that life anymore. So I was able to cry out to Jesus, and, and uh, He helped me and kind of just changed my life and my way of thinking. So um, did you have any thoughts about this particular mission before you checked in? Um, well, I was, when I checked in here for the first time, I was actually coming from Washington. And I didn't know what it was going to be like or what I was going to get myself into. Yeah. But I, I knew that it would be, a, you know, a possibility of getting myself off the street. Yeah. So what were maybe some of your first impressions of the mission here in Grants Pass? Um, my first impression, which was, was my first try at this mission, mm -hmm. and uh, really I was, I was pretty young and I wasn't quite mature enough to, to give it the full opportunity and, and uh, receive uh, you know what I could have. I know that you checked in several times here. What were, or what was one of the things maybe that pushed you to maybe get through some of your personal issues and decide to stay here? You know, uh, really everything changed when I uh, I met Jesus. You know, when I really, when I really truly heard from from his his lips. And, uh, you know, as before, I tried it and, and I couldn't do it on my own. And, and I really, uh, man, I only lasted like a week or, or sometimes even a couple of days, you know. But after that time, I really heard Jesus is when I was really uh, able to give it. Yeah. So when you say you heard Jesus, um, just share a little bit. What did that, what does that mean? Was it like an audible voice? Was it just something you just knew? You know, that still small voice that you knew in your heart. Uh, what, what was it? Just describe that a little bit. It, it was an audible voice, you know, and, and um, it was in a time where I was, I was on the street, walking up and down the street, and it was one of the one-way streets. Mm -hmm. And um, usually I was staring at the ground, had my head on the ground, staring for, you know, whatever I could find and stuff like that. And I just heard this voice that said, my people are going this way. And I, I stopped dead in my tracks and I, I looked up and uh, it was a one-way street and they, everybody was going this way, driving in their cars, going up the street. And I was the only one walking up the street, going the other way. Those choice words weren't something I would really, you know, put together on my own. Yeah. So at that point you, you felt it's almost like you were arrested not physically handcuffed like maybe you had been before, but you were, you were arrested by the voice of the Lord saying, you've been going one direction, I want you to turn and, and move in a different direction. And I think that direction was towards Him. Right. Yeah. And, and I think spiritually in that moment is when uh, He called me His own. Yeah. Okay. And so you had been here in the mission for, for a season at that time, or, or was that while um, you were actually, out? Actually, that was... That was um, I'd, I'd spent a season here before and uh, got baptized and, and, you know, fell off after I got baptized and, um, you know, was using again. And, and that moment was when I was out on the street homeless and, and still okay. using. And so one of the directions of opposite of where traffic was going and your life was going was a direction for coming back to the mission. You checked back in. Yeah. Okay. And you just knew that something was different this time. Yeah. Now I know that you, you eventually you got a job, and so tell us a, a little bit about that, getting your job at Burger King. Well, when someone comes from the street homeless, and you know, immediately we have this idea of getting the best job out there and making the most money because we, you know, we lived a life that was just a mess, and, and we just think that money is going to fix everything, you know, or, or this big, great big job is going to make me out to be this, you know, great big person. 
and uh, that's not what the Lord had in, in mind for me. And, and you know what? I am so incredibly grateful because that would have went to my ego, it would have went to my head, and, and probably would have wound up me using again. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then also, you know, I think the Lord is building me up as as His son and making me stronger, and, and He's also making me wise and and giving me the uh, the recollection of what He's doing and and. Um, there's there's been struggles along the way, you know. It hasn't been easy, but I, I think the Lord's been wanting, been telling me, uh, look at how much I can do, and how much, how little you have to do. Yeah. And you know, a lot of our uh, you know Christian walk is is yielding ourselves to Christ and and seeing His great works. Yeah. It's not necessarily all our our own. Right. And it, and it seems like with the Lord, as we walk out in faith. He doesn't show us like 10 steps out. <laughs> Sometimes it's, it's barely that first step. And I know so checking back in, um, knowing that Jesus sent you here, knowing that um, it says that there was a sense that you were walking with him this time. Not only you were walking with him, but he was carrying you. And so then you get a job at Burger King now, one of the most amazing things, um, and I'll let you, you answer that, what is one of the most amazing, unexpected things in your life uh, that you now are part of, or this person is, is part of your life? Who would that be? That would be my son. And uh, Keenan, if you want to come in here, bump, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Um, in, in my walk with Christ and, and just following the Lord. Um, I was blessed with, with my son full time and I'm now a dad that I never thought I could be and I, you know, it's not a chore, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a job, it's, it's actually, it's just the greatest gift that I could have ever ask for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So besides paying off, what was it, about $10,000 worth of fines, debt, um, getting your driver's license, buying a vehicle, getting your own apartment, um, it's just a beautiful story. And now having full custody of your son. Um, so now you're parenting, you're being a father. And so that's also something where I don't know if the, the mission had prepared you uh, to be a father, but... Um, um, in areas where I felt like I haven't been uh, received that much quality in, in being parented, you know, as a child and stuff like that, I, I just look back and I see so many areas um, where the Lord personally stepped in and like helped me out in areas, you know, because I didn't grow up like in, in the best family, but I, I look at my life today and I realize I'm actually doing good. I'm actually being a good father. I would say a successful story because of Jesus, uh, not just during your time here at the mission, but beyond. And because the struggles don't stop right. <laughs> when you're here <laughs> in the mission. In fact, uh, they continue and they increase. Um, but one thing that Jesus says, um, he says, when we are faithful with the little things, that he gives increase. And so I've seen in your life, Skyler, because of his power, because of his grace and his mercy, that you have been faithful in the small things and he's given increase in your life. And um, I just see favor and blessings over you and, and a really good friend and a really good brother. Thank you. So thank you. May the Lord continue to work in your life.